Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? Today we're going to talk about the podium mic. We got a question up here on the Baron Direct 32 rack users. And Mr. Russo is having a problem with his podium mic. He's got quite a hiss coming through there. And according to this, it's about two foot away uh, from the pastor. And he's trying to increase the gain to reach a negative 12. And he's going to try and bring it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this in X32 Edit and Reaper. Now I've got two Behringer C2 uh, condenser microphones, small condensers set up. I've got one two foot away from me at uh, mouth level, kind of simulating the podium. And then I've got one over here on my boom arm. This is a match stereo set. And it's going to go into channel 2 of X32 Edit. And the podium mic simulation is going to go into channel 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into X32 Edit. Okay, guys, so here we are. Now, what I've done to simulate this is I've got my uh, radio going in the background at a very, very low volume. Just kind of simulate some background noise in the church. Okay. So if we come over here to the channel and look at the gain, I've got that gain raised up just about as high as I can get it. And I want to get that up there, and I can bring it down just a little bit. But normally, and this is going to depend on, uh, you know, the style of the preaching that's going on. If, uh, you know, if you're a Baptist preacher, Methodist, it really doesn't matter. It's just, the, you know, how do you preach? Uh, normally, if I go in and record a Pentecostal service, I've got a limiter with me because uh, sometimes they get caught up in the spirit and uh, they're just so hard to regulate. You know, you can't ride the fader on that. They get uh, pretty vocal. Okay. Now, here on the C2 is uh, coming over and you can see the gain input on that to get it to the same level. Okay, where I'm trying to get right here. I can raise it up just a little bit there. And then as it's turned to it, as you can see, the level's coming up there. And I want to keep them as even as I can. And then let's go look at our meters. If you notice right here on channel one, okay, you can see the meters are coming up here level. But let's look at the mains right here too. Okay, that's 10 Bs right there in between the lines, and we can check that real easy, guys. I was having a conversation with Mr. Otto Bear, and let's go up here to monitor. I'm going to set this at 20 dBs. It's going to come out of the main left and right. I'm going to generate a tone, and let's just watch where that uh, meter level lines up with these lines. So as you can see right there, we are dead on that line, okay? So let's go ahead and take this up 10 dBs. And there we are on the next line up. So that's telling me that the way that I'm uh, interpreting this information is that we've got 10 Bs in between the two lines. I think Otto said he thought it was five, or I thought it was five, he thought it was seven. Vice versa, I really don't remember. Uh, this is just a way for you to check truly what your your noise is okay so we've got that here now let's look down here at these levels again on the inputs coming into the channels again this is the one that's 24 inches away and this is the one that is close up that is a tremendous difference between these two Okay, concerning that noise coming in. So now, let's go over to our stream bus. Now, we haven't done any amplification on this whatsoever. We've simply run it into this bus. But this is the problem. Let's say that on your stream bus that you are trying to get more volume of that. So what do you do? You know, by nature, you're going to raise this up because you need to get it louder. Okay? So now that we've went through this bus and we've amplified that signal, let's go back and look at our meters. 
So we're right here at the 10 dB. Next bus one, look at it right here. See what happens when I pull it down? Okay, so this hiss is going to follow this signal path all the way through. Let's go ahead and watch it right here now when I'm silent. So if you're raising this up 10 dBs, you're going to pick it up all the way through this signal chain. Okay. Because if you come to the end of that signal chain, and let's say that you use some type of a... Uh, let me find it here. Precision limiter. And let's go ahead and put these on the mains. Again, we can see that signal coming in and out. If we talk into this to where we start to get some reduction over here, like we're getting now, we're actually adding the output gain into it as well. So let's go ahead and watch that signal now. Now, keep in mind, when I'm not speaking, I'm already just about, you know, look where this signal is compared to when I turn it off. So now we went below a negative 50 dB noise floor, above a negative 40. Okay, we're peaking just about that negative 35 dBs. This is how you get that hiss coming into the system. Okay, now at this point, if you take that and you amplify it through anything. Okay, let me turn these back off. If you amplify this through anything, as, as your external going into whatever is feeding your stream, Again, you are amplifying that hiss. Let's go back and look at our meters. So there, number one, we have our stream bus. Seven and eight is our mains. And then there's our inputs, channel one and two. As you can see, these are relatively level. So now let's go ahead and go over into Reaper, and we're going to record this noise. Okay, guys, here we are in Reaper. Uh, these are the two inputs here. I'm going to go ahead and record this. I'm going to be silent and just sit back. We're going to give it about 20 seconds. Actually, we're going to stop it at 10, and we're going to save both files. And that is our file. Okay, but now these files are truly is simply what was recorded in. And now we're going to bring them to what you would actually listen to them at. We're going to analyze both files. There's your noise difference between the two uh, mics right there. Okay, there's almost a 10 dB difference. So we're going to select both of these, and then we're going to normalize them to a negative 23. And what I'm doing here is I'm simply simulating what, you know, what you do to bring this up to listening level. Okay, so now we've got a true peak of a negative 6, which is fine, a negative 4.8, which is fine. But look at the increase over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play these two files. And I do want to make sure. Let me put a meter here on the end of it. And then I'm going to put a volume adjustment. And I've got it here somewhere. I know that I do. I use it all the time. There we go. I'm simply going to put this in front. So we're going to go ahead and solo this out and see if we can get this up there between that negative 16 and negative 20 luffs. 
Senate Kami McCormick, Ukraine's foreign minister, has swiftly denied his country has plans for any offensive actions in the breakaway republic, despite claims by its separatist leader and in Munich, Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Now, as you can see right there, we're not, uh, we're not where we need to be. So let's go ahead and solo the second one now. Remember, the mic number two, this is the one that was a little bit closer to my mouth. And it's nowhere even close. Okay, but that's what that noise is going to sound like when it's amplified. So how do we correct that? Let's go ahead and jump back over into X32 Edit. Now, here we are. We're going to go to the uh, podium microphone. We're going to come up to the gate. We're going to activate that gate. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this threshold, and I'm going to be silent until I can start to see that gain reduction come down. I'm going to set this around 40 dBs, okay? See how it's flickering right there? As you can see, my voice is now making it open up, and we want this to where it's going to come shut and stay shut. And there we are. Now, when I had it down here, guys, it's actually picking up the radio. Uh, and you should not hear this radio coming through the dynamic microphone that I'm using. But you will see it being picked up through the uh, condenser microphone. And there we go. If you notice this is on 40, you'll see this red line come down to that 40. Okay? So how do we set our gate? Well, I want that gate to come on just as soon as that person starts speaking. Okay, and that's the attack right here. That's what's going to adjust that attack. I want it to come on very, very fast. Now, behold, how long do I want that gate to stay open to allow that voice to come through? Now, these next two, the, the hold and the release, is the tricky part of the gate. Okay. Because now it depends on how does that person speak. Are we talking Pentecostal preacher? Are we talking Southern Baptist preacher uh, in their late 80s that talks with a very soft voice that doesn't have a lot of dynamics in that voice? Because this is going to matter. If it's a Pentecostal preacher, I don't need very much hold on it whatsoever. Because they're going to be up and down just talking left and right, left and right, up and down at a loud voice, and it's not going to matter. Okay? So you're going to have to adjust this to suit your needs. Now the release. How fast do we want that gate to shut? If you've got a lot of pausing, if your type of preacher or preaching is they, you know, they, they make a statement, they wait not so much maybe for interaction from the from the people sitting in the uh, sanctuary, but maybe they're doing a pause for effect type of deal. Okay? So you want to set that release as they're waiting for it, just like you can see it going right here. If you set it too long, you see how long it's taking that gate to shut. Watch the meter right here. And the reason I'm going to the extremes here, because you may have a preacher, pastor, you know, whatever you want to refer to them as, that they may drag out their words. They may use a type of preaching uh, emphasis on the last word that they say. And it could be lower. It could be higher. This is where you've got to come in and play with these gates. Now keep in mind, this is strictly just for the podium mic on that one individual person. Okay? So let's say that, that before that preacher comes up to preach, maybe that's the same mic that's used by the youth to make the youth announcements. 
Well, they're not going to know to go up there and speak directly into that podium mic with a, you know, a bold, clear, forceful voice. Okay, maybe you got somebody that's going to come up there from uh, the woman's group, you know, uh, coming up there, Missy Sweetwater, that's, hi, you know, just, and I can't do it, like, I, I, my voice won't let me do it this morning, uh, you know, that, that speaks with a timid voice. Well, this gate is just going to, it, it's going to chop their vocals up so bad, so you wouldn't be able to use that. But as soon as you deactivate it, that's going to go back out into your stream. Okay? So you've got to take uh, input gains. You've got to take mic placement. You've got to take your recording environment. You've got to take everybody that's going to speak into this microphone into account when you start laying out these gates. It's just that simple. There is no quick fix method. There is no single button that you click, okay? And I, I take that back. There, there is a way that you can go in here and create snippets to make this gate react different from the preacher to the timid to the uh, louder to the bass voice, to, you know, but this is not what this video is about. It's about how to get that hiss out of that stream. Now, keep in mind, if that hiss is loud enough, if it's overpowering the vocals, that when that gate opens, not only does it let the voice come through, but it's going to let that hiss come through as well. Okay, because that's what the gate is doing. It is opening up, and it's letting everything come through. Okay, so keep in mind, guys, like I said, it's all going to start with this proper input gain, okay? Now, if I come over here to vocal mic number two, and I put my mouth right up close by it, you can see I can reduce this down. If this was a lapel mic, look what I'm reducing it down by. Now, I'm leaning a little bit closer into my uh, other microphone because I've got it attached to that boom arm. But look at the meters now. You don't even see anything coming out. Let's go look at the other meters. As you can see, number one has that noise coming through it, the input number one, but number two does not, nor is it coming through the bus. Okay? So I hope this has helped clear some things up. Uh, it's very tricky when you start to get into using these gates. It's not simply just a matter of coming in and moving these to wherever it works for one particular uh, situation. Okay, now if I set the mic on the one for six inches, I can totally change this to the way that I would want to set it for my speaking. And look at the difference of the way that it reacts. Okay, I've still got it coming in attacking very fast. The, the hold, I can, I can actually shut that down just a little bit more. And now the release can be a lot quicker. Okay, take care, God bless, and we are out of here.